All right, Chris, how you doing? Welcome to the channel. This is our first episode of what I have have coined for the show, Vaca Wars. Okay. So, nice. So this I think is episode six of Vaca Wars, but this wow. will be an ongoing saga like all the other stuff that we've done in the past, like right. you know, second wave and uh, you know, red line and <laughs> all the other stuff. All right, so all right, oh, so for the ones that are watching, because I have five different channels, is it five? Oh, six channels. All right, I have three YouTube channels, Brighton, Rumble, and BitChute. So this is going to be broadcasted on all those. So for the the new subscribers I have, can you you know plug your your work and how to find you and all that stuff? Right. Um I have been uh, researching a lot of uh, art history for a long time and from Benghazi uh, up to current, uh, actually World War II. Um, and I've done some work with Ukrainians actually and through the Army, California National Guard. Um, they don't like being called Russians, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> they're uh, it's back in uh, 99 and they were really impressed with America and everything we had going on here and, and didn't really believe me when I said that um, the grocery store was the grocery store and how a lot of food was there and they were just amazed and that but as things progressed on um uh, i was in the army national guard military police did eight and a half years did the first year of war in iraq kept in tra track with a lot of my iraqi buddies and contractors i've been keeping uh, tabs on our military operations and uh some of them have been very good i haven't liked what we've been doing whether it was uh, bush or or uh, obama um, behind the scenes of Trump's stuff to now, it, it's not okay. Uh, and I've looked into the Ukrainian thing situation there deeply, and I've found a lot of stuff that's not pretty. A lot of stuff. Okay, so so before we go to the next section of this this uh, the show, can you tell the people how to find you? You know your you know, your social media stuff, any channels that you still have up, <laughs> that stuff. Right. Well, um, I am on Twitter, uh, at the under, underscore Chris Hunter, K-R-I-S, Hunter, H-U-N-T-E-R, and underscore again, it's very simple. You just type in Chris Hunter, it should come up. Um, for uh, YouTube, uh, it's just the Fax Hunter, um, or I came in, let's see here. They, they offered me my very own URL. So it's, it is YouTube and it's uh, the Truth Hunter. So under the Truth Hunter got that. Okay. Uh, I'll give you some links. Okay. So the best way to get a hold of you is through Twitter and to watch your work is through YouTube. Yes. Okay. So for, to, for the ones that are watching, um, you know, to help support this channel, uh, please go and make sure you subscribe to all of the channels. That's all three YouTube channels, the Brighton channel, the BitChute channel, and the Rumble channel. And please go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. All of the descriptions or all the links are in the description below the video. So please click that. I sell a lot of really good health products that you know, or anti-aging and boost up your immune system and everything like that. So please go to the store and, and, and help out the work. Um, okay, so uh, Chris, I'm going to kind of do a little recap of what my understanding of what's going on with Ukraine now. I've been busy with medical school and, you know, my forte has been, you know, dealing with cadavers and, and, and immunology and, not mine you know, <laughs> and all that and all that stuff all right so so i you know I, so if i'm wrong just correct me all right you, you won't you won't hurt my feelings no all right so my understanding was this that putin has telegraphed this back in 2007 on what he felt the greater russia should be mm -hmm. and that he has felt that he was kind of like the next, you know, czar of Russia, the next, you know, really important person to reconstitute 
to rebuild the, the, it. The, Soviet, the rebuild the Soviet Union or reconstitute this, the Soviet Union. Now, with that, during th there was a lost opportunity from my perspective um, from, from uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall. So that's the that's like the tale that that you know um, Reagan gets out of office and then right. Bush is in office and the fall of Berlin Wall happens. That there was this perfect opportunity to kind of embrace Russia, but what happened was there was this Jeffrey Sachs from our from I also believe from Goldman Sachs, and he was the architect of shock therapy to get their economy and their currency in line with the West. And that did not go very well. And that lasted from, I don't know, from the early, you know, mid to early 90s to around 98, 99, and it was a catastrophe. It caused a lot of problems, right. all right? Uh, and this, we're kind of living in that wake economically of Russia, mm -hmm. all right? Now, um, Putin is KGB, and uh, he was in East Berlin when the wall fell, and that he was actually fearful of his life, and that there was a story that within the embassy that he was in, or whatever, or the the office that he was in, that they were burning papers during the <laughs> kind of the uprising. Never happened. Um, you know. So okay. So now. He, we never really engaged. My perspective is this that we didn't properly engage Russia to bring him into um, yeah. the wider security in, uh, uh, architecture, is what they call it the security architecture for the West. Um, and there was a lot of pushback with a lot of these, these different presidents. Like, for example, I think there was a little bit of an embracement with Bush Jr. But right after Obama gets into office, there, there's this, this push away and that uh, it, Russia is no longer part of the G8, you know, it's now G7. So there was this continuing kind of push away of Russia. Right. Then Crimea gets annexed right after the Sochi Olympics. Right. That's my understanding. And then um, Obama didn't do anything, nope. all right? Okay, so now Trump gets into office, and before Trump gets into office, there's sanctions because of Crimea and all this yeah. stuff. So there's further pushing away of Russia mm -hmm. from, from West. And there's more of an alignment with Russia to China now. Now I'll bring up the China thing in a, in a moment, but now Trump gets into office and there's further sanctions, but he, it seemed as though he wanted to reach out to Putin and kind of normalize the situation, but he couldn't because there was this constant investigation saying that there was this Russian, you know, switching of the votes to Trump and that, you know, that the Manchurian candidate is Trump and all this stuff, right? right. And he was always fighting the news media. Right. And, the and he, could never, he could never reach out because it would, it would make it seem as though he was the Manchurian mm -hmm. And that was done deliberately. That was done deliberately, I think. 100%. So, okay, so, so now he's out of office and we have Biden. Biden doesn't have a brain uh, and whoever is <laughs> pulling his strings is orchestrating this. Yep. Okay, so Russia has been funding over the years since 2014 the separatist group. So this, this map here is Ukraine, Belarus, Poland, Romania, Moldova, Crimea, Russia. But this hash mark area is the separatist uh, breakaway. Mm -hmm. Now the dashed line is their province within that separatist group. So the, the separatist group stronghold is a subset of a larger province. Mm -hmm. right. Right. There's two provinces actually. So, so my understanding is this, that last night that, that Russia went in and took over the separatist area. They're occupying the area now. Yeah, and it's occupying it with tanks and stuff. <clears throat> now, that was last night. And um, before he did that, 
his was it derma. Is that what they call it? The derma. Their um, uh, um, their parliament. <laughs> what is yeah. it called? Derma. Yeah. Der der derma, right? Yeah. All right. So their parliament. They before he goes in, they say, "Okay, we're going to recognize separatists." Right. So he justifies going in because they're recognized. And there's been shelling between Ukraine and the separatists yep. for a long time. Right. And that's and not a surprise. 2014, right? Yep. Eight years. Right. So now he's trying to justify him moving in. Okay. Now he's stating that he's not only wanting the separatist subset area, he right. wants the whole province. Right. And then earlier today, I saw some video that showed that um this this blue line here is is uh is the river that mm -hmm. kind of bifurcates right east bank and west bank of, of ukraine okay so here's the capital the kiev all right so my understanding is is that in kiev there were helicopters flying around in the outer edge of the city and that most likely those helicopters came from Belarus. Now, Russia is aligned soldiers along the Belarus, the Russian border and the separatist area. And then it's, it's been kind of like moving in. Right. Okay. So the last I heard was that there were 137 uh, Ukrainians slash soldiers that have been killed so far as of this recording. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and that was through the shelling that was taking place throughout the mm -hmm. day and, and last night. All right, so we, we we're so gonna, we're so from there, so from there, take it away. Well, what we're going to have issues with is differentiating where the actual artillery rounds are coming from. Is it coming from Ukraine or Russia themselves? Is it coming from the separatists and so on? Um, that but that'll take some some investigating to do. We can't just pull that out of the air right now. Um, the problem with a lot of what's happening in Ukraine and what Putin said even, is he's going in to get the, the uh, Nazis out that are to get in there. And that's the problem where the United States has helped to create that situation as um, a proxy war, kind of like uh, Hezbollah and Iran. Uh, and so we're like, hey, we'll create this force in there. And they've been integrated into their military, um, as in, to be this component to it. And um, when you do that, you leave, uh, like in, when they had their uh, uprising in their uh, elections eight years ago, when all this, the power structure changed, it's because the Obama administration inserted themselves in there. And it comes back to, um, us controlling a country right next to Russia. Uh, and these people went in and they pretended they were the police and they shot a bunch of their own demonstrators and then shot some of the um, good guys. And it just, it was horrible. But that's why we're going to have some problems finding out what's going on here is, is who did what and when. And I got to tell you, part of me is, is hoping that Russia cleans them out. You know, but at the same time. No way. I, this is my take. I think that both sides are, are at fault here. There's, there is the special force KGB aspect from Russia, yeah. and there is our special force CIA yeah. that's doing the same. It's, it's, we're both at fault here. Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. You know? And I think that, again, it goes back to those early days. We missed the opportunity to embrace this new beginning of Russia, bring them into the security right. uh, you know, architecture, and then go and use that as leverage against China. Because my yeah. concern here is, is that as Russia advances, and I believe they're gonna advance right to this, this river that, that bifurcates Ukraine, all right? Um, once they do that, that, that's, that it's gonna show how, how willing are the, the NATO forces to engage Russia in the territory of Ukraine, right. and I think that unfortunately, I don't, I, I, I don't think that the NATO forces are willing to engage. And They're so, not. what this is going to end up being is, is this is going to be ending up being another Afghanistan, 
where we're going to be funding and pushing weapons and 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 funding the insurgents within Ukraine to fight Russia. And and it is no accident, no accident that what when we did our when it when did we start um when did we start leaving or retreating from however you want to <laughs> running away from Afghanistan? Was it August? Um yeah, hey, started it? yeah, started right there and gosh. okay. So we're talking we're talking like eight months. Right. What, what, what I'm telling you. And so that's like eight months of uh, no bullet sales, no gun sales, <laughs> no tank sales. So, you know, so the, the military industrial complex is, is licking their chops now and saying, hey, we get, here's another 10 years worth of coin that can be minted here for, 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 for arms sales. Minting is a great way to put it. And, and here's how this works. Um, October is the fiscal year for the, for the government, right? So the government traditionally will go to war between October and March. Because the funding comes in, they start cranking up the machinery, and by March, what, what's, what's, co what's coming up here soon? What's coming up really soon? Oh, marches. <laughs> yeah, right. and they're able right. to get all the machinery and, and gear and going, everything starting to point at the direction and start their, their engagement. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing the tail end of that uh, time period between October and March to their new goal. That's very interesting. Hey, so I sent I sent you the link to this um, this uh, uh, woman that wrote a book about Putin and the and the five point plan and his kind of like larger Russia kind of aspect. Yeah. Her name is Rebecca uh, Koffler, I think it is, um, and I think it's called Putin's Playbook. It's the name of the book. Okay. But she said something very interesting during the interview. I'm not sure if that video I gave you was from BBC or DW, I can't remember. But um, she was really pushing the idea of tactical nukes. Yes. All right. So what's your take? You know, you've been in the military, you know the area. Right. How feasible is that as an option for Putin in this theater? Yeah, that's a really touchy one. Um, I, I think personally that we've used them. We don't say we've used them. I can't confirm that we used them. I've seen things that would say that they were used. Um, I would say that he would probably use them. Um, and I don't think that we would go higher than that. I don't, I, it, because everybody knows once you do that. Well, what kind of range are we talking about with these tacticals? Is it, my understanding was like one megaton to five megaton. Now, or can they dial it even lower? Well, you can dial even lower. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> you can take out a tank or you can take out a brigade of tanks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the size of ammunition uh, is, is changed a lot too, the miniaturizing of them. Um, so, I mean, do you think fallout is an issue like, you know, back, you know, in the 90s? You know, is, is that as a weapon system or do you think that fallout is still an issue? Well, with the these lower yield, yield, lower yield tactical. Right, right, and the smaller they are, and ground burst ones are, are the what you want to look at. And so, and traditional weaponry, nuclear weapons or ICBMs are coming in. They're air bursts. They're not going to be ground bursts. They're about uh, 500 meters, you know, kilometer above the ground to so mm -hmm. on, depending on the area they want to hit, because that's how they're going to get the most damage. It's not on the ground. On the grounds, you screw everything up because it's got to run through all that stuff. Yeah. And so well, like I, I was actually at the memorial for uh, Hiroshima. Okay. Right, when I was in Japan, and I believe it was like four hundred. Was it four hundred meters or something mm -hmm. above yeah. ground before it, it, you know detonated it, and then you know they had their test. That was so much larger. Yeah, that was their test. Um, they didn't need to do the second one, but they did it anyways. Uh, and and that's what we we came up with is ground burst was not a good idea. Yeah. So okay. So 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 with 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 ground burst. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, right. in terms of like radiation, you know, like we're trained in medical school. Don't you know over radiate the patient? 
you know, that could be a problem, <laughs> you know, right. CT, you know, CT scans and, you know, and everything. So, or the um, technician running them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you know, what, how they calibrate it is they use uh, cadavers or sometimes even mummies. Oh, really? You know, and, and, and they can, yeah. So the they damage. Can, uh, okay. You know, so, okay. So, um, so in terms of radiation, fallout and, and, and that, you know, uh, and, and the half-life of that radiation, how long are we talking about when we're talking about tactical nukes? Because, you know, you and I are roughly the same age, right. you know, we're, we, you know, we were, you know, we heard that, well, you know, if there was going to be this, this exchange of nuclear weapons during the eighties, that everything would turn into, you know, a nuclear winner and you know the day after was the famous show the movie that came out right. you know it was horrible days. right right so you know how realistic is the use of tactical nukes very, very in terms very. of in terms of what's the radiation fallout is it are we talking only days are we talking years what, well, what, i mean what kind of <clears throat> what kind of how long is that region radiated the region will be radiated for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, not millions, but that initial detonation is seconds because that's what usually gets everything is that detonation of it and the radiation going out at that spot and anything standing there in the way gets nuked, like it's done, gone, vaporized. Or like, for example, look, for example, when I went to Hiroshima, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't see Nagasaki, but I, you know, when I went to Hiroshima, I, you know, being the dumb American, you know, I thought I was going to see a wasteland. It's all built up yeah. with, you know, the Yokohama, the, or not the Yokohama, the, the, um, the Hiroshima Carps, I think, or the baseball mm -hmm. team. And all that. right. so it, it's all built up. Yeah. All right. And yes, it was a low yield. The reality of the situation is, is that it's a prosperous city right. now. Yep. So, with, so my perspective is, is that if you dial back <laughs> the tactical nuke, which I think Putin's going to use, mm -hmm. that based on what he's just said today, uh, it, it doesn't seem as though there's going to be that much of a radiation. Uh, Aftermath. Uh, long, yeah, longevity, that the half-life is relatively short and that it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it is big of a deal like the, the first year. It, right. It's a big deal to, at, at, the in, at the instant of, of detonation. Right. But it's not going to be hundreds mm -hmm. of years of, desolation it's not like a chernobyl right which is right? good to bring up and that most of that is on the surface of the ground and once that has a couple layers on it then they worry about it less and less and less of a problem unless you dig it up right and so right. that's how they look at it. and they look at it this way is they're looking at it as a countrywide they're like oh that's a couple thousand people might die from radiation but we'll be okay as where we look at it, like gosh that could hurt people you know that could be my family type thing and we look at it two different perspectives is where countries like yeah and it's an interesting it's an interesting thing that you bring up there because that's exactly what stalin thought during world war ii mm -hmm. that you know the millions of deaths to fight the nazis was was yeah. you know quite yeah. the right thing to do so that perspective is very similar to the chinese perspective it's like oh, yeah. well we have 1.4 billion people we can lose 30 million you know, yeah. without blink. <laughs> no. Think about it. They could send a million people to their death a day for a year straight and still have tons of people left over. Right, right, right. Exactly. I mean, they, they, right. And that would equal about the size of our country Yeah. in, in terms of people. Exactly. So, when you put it in that perspective, you're like, oh, wow. Right. Okay. So, okay. So he makes this statement. Putin makes this statement today to the West. You know, I'm paraphrasing it, that you that what's possibly going to happen if you keep on pushing is, is that the West is going to experience something that they've never seen in their history. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I interpret that as tactical nukes. That's what I interpret. But what I also interpret that as is, is that a, a, I think that there's a high potentiality of a biological exchange, biological weapon exchange. A chemical, biological, and tactical exchange, and that you know it, it may go in waves. Um, 
I'm not sure if he would pick the tactical nuke first before the biologic, you know, what his calculus is. But it wouldn't surprise me that he infects Western Ukraine. Right. But I don't think it, he's going to do that at the very beginning. And, you know, what's interesting is, is that the way I did a video on this, and hopefully you can see this, but um, in number of cases of Omicron, mm -hmm. okay, um, in South Africa, they peaked in, um, in January, okay? Right. Our Omicron cases peaked in February, mid-February. Now, it looks based on what is published, and who knows if Russia and China are given correct information all along how <laughs> accurate databases, but, but it looks like they peaked. They, they, they have, they've also peaked. I'm sorry. I think I got this. It's dates wrong. I believe they, there we go. I got these dates wrong. This December peaks in mid January and they're peaking in mid February. We're February right now. Yeah. February. Yep. So they're peaking in they're, They peaked around February 11th. Okay. All right. So my point here is, is that there's, South Africa peaked in this mid December. America peaked mid January. All right. And that February, mid February is the peak for, for Putin. And I think this is the reason why mm. he didn't do anything. It wasn't the Olympics. He right. had six people. Right. All right. And it seems as though there was an inoculation that's going on in, around January or the first two weeks of December. Right. And I believe that this was the preparation for the potential inoculation of, of biologics he may use and that he knows that there, right. that there is a, a certain period of time right. that those tighter levels are high enough mm -hmm. where he can go in right. All right, with, for his population to be protected mm -hmm. and his soldiers to be protected. He can't just inoculate them, wait 10 years, and then move in. <laughs> he, has, he has about six months. Right. And, and, you know, this thing spreads around, takes some time, you know. So it makes sense for him to make the move as, you know, he approaches, you know, uh, an endemic phase for Omicron. Um, right. So they're on the downswing. His society's getting he's, his society is getting healthier relative to infections with Om Omicron. Mm -hmm. So it seems that he could he could be preparing for biological release. So I, you know I'm seeing it in like three buckets here: biological release, tactical nukes, and chemical. Now, what kind of from what kind of chemical weapons would they use? Um, chemical weapons are going to be like the uh, sarin gas, the uh, uh, VX gas, the blister agents, and that kind of stuff. Um, that's really messy stuff, and and I would think he would use biological over chemical because of that. Uh, biological, you, you can adjust for, but chemical, once you use it, yeah, they can get your own guys. You can't inoculate from that. Yeah, and and yeah. there's an advantage to using tactical nukes also to. And I was just thinking about this: is if you did it in a couple key places you would keep people from coming into that area again. And right. if you've done right, you created a barrier. Like this a, is something similar to what minefield. Saddam, Saddam Hussein was doing with lighting up those, those oil fields. Yes. Oh, that, that you plow the field so you can't see. Yeah, it really screwed up radar too. Yeah, so, okay. So if you were poop, all right, and you had, yeah. you know, options, and you were going to use ta tactical nukes. Would you use it in Ukraine, or yes. do you think you would you would use it against Britain, Germany, or Poland, or some of the other NATO countries? I would use it in Ukraine because they already have the Chernobyl situation. Um, for that reason, uh, their people are, are used to dealing with the radiation. Um, I don't see him doing any other country because then that brings in a whole another uh, realm of retaliation uh, is where 
if they come after England or um, Germany or Poland, there could be instant reprisal where Ukraine they don't have tactical nukes. At least I don't think they do, unless we've been secretly giving to them. We'd never do that, though. Um, so, yeah, I, that's what he would use it if he's going to use it. Now, is Putin, is he Tai Chi? Does he practice Tai Chi or is it Judo? It's Judo, right? Um, it's Judo. I think it's Judo. That's a good question. I want to say I think judo. But judo is kind of like the idea of like the 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 opponent is moving and you're move you're you're using their movement against them. Right. right? Aikido would be the the one where you just used all their stuff. It's also used in law enforcement. So I don't think NATO is as strong as they say it is. Dude. I think it's somewhat dilapidated. He's yeah, he's got them. Totally. Uh, none of them want to get in the fight because he has the 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 fuel that they need to run. Yeah. And they know that we're already over here and we have an idiot for a commander and they're like, yeah, we don't believe that if it's Trump, we'd be okay because we know he doesn't fuck around. But Biden's like, we're going to put sanctions on him. So I, I don't think, think they have yeah. comments. All right. So he's, he's, he's basically already controlled the separatist area. Yep. And he's going to start controlling I, relatively quickly. This thing's going to go fast. This is, this is all going to control the, the whole province right. of the separatist area. Now this he is, wants that whole. He wants that whole heat, that, that whole coastline of the sea of Azov, right. I know it's pronounced. We need so, to make sure that we understand it's all to get to the Black Sea. Right, right. So we got Crimea, the Sea of Azov, Black Sea down here. All right. The problem is, is that Ukraine has the northern part of the Sea of Azov. Mm -hmm. um, Crimea is the west side, and Russia was the east side. Now, if you pinch off, off uh, Ukraine, they they have no access to the Sea of Oz, Azov, but they have a little bit of an access um, west of Crimea. Okay, but I think that Putin it's it's like a few stages. Stage one, go into the separatist area. Stage two, control the province of the separatist area, the great province. Stage three is to take over the East Bank, east of the, of the river. And Kiev is west of the river. I think he's gonna try to, to get that, okay? Right. Now, he's not gonna wanna nuke what he wants. So, and this is a natural boundary. Right. Instead of putting up the Berlin Wall, God has already put up a wall for him <laughs> and he's going to use it, right? Yep. yep. So, so. Utilize your features. Right. So, he's going to use, he's going to, if he's going to do tactical nukes in Ukraine here, do you think it's going to, Closer to Poland? Mm. You think it's? I think he's going to. I don't even know where where. I mean, they're going to if they take over the capital. I'm not sure where where the president of Ukraine goes. Um, where would they move their capital? That's a really good question. Um, I would say probably one of their older cities. Um, but still, uh, I Putin doesn't care. <laughs> he's just going to make it happen. Um, I, I also wanted to draw attention to the fact that why is this becoming an issue that it is now too? Why is it happening now? And I think there comes back to Putin sees it's a good time to do it because the weakness of the other countries and the support, but they're drumming it up on our side. Like, why is the media drumming it up now? Because Ukrainians are like, hey, why is this a big deal now? This has been this way for eight years. And I'm kind of wondering, are they trying to distract from the vaccination stuff that's been happening and the, the 
a good point. I mean, you know, what's, what are the things that have happened in, in the last 12 months or so? Right. You know, I, I see a, a few things and it's not so clear on what, what, you know, what is the, what was the tipping point? What was the last straw that, you know, broke the camel's back? Number one is that there's the banking, the central banks, right? The central banks are signaling raising rates. Mm -hmm. All right. So that means that the whole bond market is going to start selling off. Yep. Okay. There is the pullout of Afghanistan and the need for a new war yep. somewhere for mm -hmm. money. So the war machine. All right. That's there is the the there may be something going on internally in Russia where Putin feels threatened. Didn't he get rid of the presidency? Didn't he stop that from happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of similar. Well, a little different, but there's a similarity between China and Russia in the sense right. that there's this kind of never-ending dictatorship, you mm -hmm. know? Right. But that always fails, though. That will always that, that will eventually fail. Time's on our side of that. Yeah. So you know, but there is the the COVID, you know, the COVID issue. <clears throat> right. COVID, you know, biological war. The banks need to reset. You know, and maybe I don't. I tell you, I don't. I. There must be something that Putin feels threatened about, because he pondered this. Mm -hmm. He, you know, the thing is, he's been thinking about this for a long time. Right. All right. According to Rebecca uh, um, Koffler, right. It was. It's been twenty years, but I think that he's really been planning. You know, the details of this. Uh, Publicly in the last two years, like what, how to stage it, right? And yet, the, like the, the theme, and then you know, and then the war plan. Now he did make that statement. Maybe you can play it for the audience. Um, if not, then that's okay. But he made that statement about how he thought that COVID was going to change and threaten. Oh. The world, right. the world you know, and, right. and, and the architecture, the, the security architecture. And this was, in, my understanding was at the beginning of the career, two years ago. Yeah. Um, I don't have that actual clip, but there's there's some a uh, couple of things I wanted to show you that okay. might be at play here. Now, um, let me share the screen real quick. Uh, Putin. Um, you have disabled. Uh, oh, I gotta show. I gotta. Do I have to show it to you? Sort of. Is that we have a, um, U.S. bio labs in Ukraine, all over the place, and one of them happens to be in that. Okay, I made you. I made you host, so you should be able to do it. Got it. Okay, so like here is a I, it's really small. I'm sorry, I can't get, make it bigger right now. But um, is Ukraine, and we have bio labs all over in Ukraine. One of them happens to be in that separatist area that you're talking about. Right. And so we got so we have a bio weapon here. Yep. We got one near Kiev, or two near Kiev. We look like there's. Am I looking at the blues or the reds? Or am I looking yeah, all those are all those are about, all of them are okay. Yeah. So you have some near Poland, right? You have some by Moldova. Mm -hmm. You have one by Crimea, Crimea, just west of Crimea. All right. Okay. So there's. And then you have one near the border of Russia. Yeah, right there. Shit. 
Now, that said, this is what we found today. Um, Ukrainians, oh, back it up, sorry, wrong one. We found Ukrainians outside burning, <laughs> burning uh, papers from the building there, one of the buildings. One of our buildings that they were doing uh, um, experiments in, biolab stuff, uh, Ukrainian soldiers out there burning documents from it. So, and that's in Kiev. It wouldn't surprise me that they're covering up their trail with one of the weapon, with one of the BS, BSL-4 labs. Yeah. There's the 11 BSL labs that are around the world. And so he may be trying to capture one of those to get the evidence on what's going on. Or to find or, out what it is we're using. Or, or <laughs> to get the lines that are in the freezer. Yep. Yep. It's not so much the paper. Right. It's the, it's the, it's the biologics that are in a, in a test tube or a Petri dish. Yep. So. There's a lot of that play here and a lot going on. I tell you, there's I, I think there's a bio, I you know, I think there is a biological thing going on here. Mm -hmm. You know. And I have I I I'm 100 percent sure that SARS CoV-2 and SARS was made by Barry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Yeah. The question is. Did the CIA release it to try to take down sheep? Or was it that there's a larger thing going on? You know, is it as simple as we were trying to take down President G and it, it's that simple? I think, or was there something bigger that was happening? Yeah, I think some bigger. To take down, to take down basically Trump. Western civilization, Trump and all this, and then do this, this larger reset, what I call the order. The order executed ex executed their their order <laughs> and, and and you know for for a, a one world government. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It was a larger one, and Trump was in the way. I know that I could tie the NIH and Serbian broadband together with the with the FBI, uh, and we know that Serbian broadband was where Serbia we uh, had uh, a Dominion voting going back to. And I think it was to do that. And I know that uh, Nancy Pelosi took 40 plus members of Congress in February of 2020 to NATO secretly. The U.S. media never played a dang second of that. And they triggered Article 5 when they were there. They All right. Were, so for the ones that are not as well with it, with uh, international politics and, and NATO documentation can you explain article five to the audience article five is uh, like like nothing to do with our, our constitution people always mix those up but nato as the north atlantic idiots i mean something like that they they uh, they triggered that once 9-11 happened when the towers happened they triggered article five well, that means all those countries in the nato um accommodation um have to come to your aid it could be financially, it could be cyber, it could be a kinetic war, or it could be a fifth generational war. And so when they went and did that uh, in February 2020, they triggered Article 5. They didn't say what they did, and they didn't tell anybody they did it. But Congress is the one who declares war. And that was right after they said the second impeachment of Trump, and it failed. And they went back there and they met with everybody and said, thank you, Putin, for giving us the reason to do this. And so they're using the excuse that Putin was helping Trump. Um, just like yeah. right now, he's being villainized for that. Yeah. And that was, My, you know, I don't know what was, I'm assuming they went over there probably after Trump said that he wanted to defund NATO. You know? Right. Or pull right. out of NATO. And that's when that's so, when, you know, on the surface, it could be that they're trying to appease the other NATO members saying, Don't listen to Trump, you know, we have the purse, 
and you know Trump mm -hmm. will be gone and NATO will be back to the way it was where the United States basically funds it and you know you know yeah. and it's going to be that way I heard a a um, a broadcast broadcaster that's talking about the actual military for Germany mm -hmm. and they they did an assessment the, the, the government did an assessment mm -hmm. with for Germany, the German government. And they said that the, the, um, the number of troops and the weapons and the vehicles and all that are all outdated yeah. and in, in poor shape. Germany can't wage a war because they've been spending not enough to keep it up, mm -hmm. let alone ramp it up. So it's been almost, there's been a defunding of, yep. of me for a right. while. And I think, tr I think Putin knows this. Yeah, the and whole time Obama NATO was there. It's not as strong as they say. It right. Is. Obama, and, the whole time he was in, did not upgrade or maintain our nuclear arsenal like he was supposed to. It all degraded. Right, right, right. And that, that's, the, that's the thing that people also need to understand is, is that once you make a nuclear weapon, it doesn't, it, it doesn't just stay on the shelf and you, know, and you just wipe it down, you know, and make right. sure there's no dust. Yeah. It degrades. Yeah. And, and the electronics degrade. for the weapon system degrade. Yep. So there's part of our arsenal that may not even go off if we need it. Right. If you took it. So when we say that we have about 7,000 about seven to 8,000 nuclear weapons, there's probably a good percentage, probably 40%. Click a no bang. <laughs> that, right. They go off as a firecracker and that's it. Yeah. Beep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so we probably only have an arsenal of about 3,000 3, to 3,500. Yeah, it was something like that. That have some level of lethality. Yeah, you know, nuclear lethality. Right. You know, so the America is weaker than it is than it's being projected, and, and it, I think this is why it's so it's so important to realize that we are moving into kind of a World War Three situation. Yeah, Putin realizes that the West is weak, weak with leaders we have weak leaders and we are weakened because our military is 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 somewhat degraded and, and we have open doors on our north and south right and then you have a rising power in asia that we financed yep all right sure did that is going to take over taiwan and the other island chains mm -hmm. all right so the united states is not in a position I mean, we couldn't kill off. Think about this. Mm -hmm. We couldn't kill off towel heads in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And we spent a trillion some dollars. Right. All right. With all the SEAL Team 6 and SEAL Team 2 and SEAL Team 3 and SEAL Team this and that. Yeah. And everything, bunker right? busters. Yeah, bunker busters and then MOA, you know, the mother of all yeah. bombs and all this. Yeah. So, so we couldn't kill off towel heads. What makes you think that we're going to be able to kill off the Ruskies? Right. No. Like not no. even. And there's no chance. And they've got China behind them. Right. So, so the United States is in a weakened position. It's in a weakened position because we have, have we are laden with debt. You know, because of all these social programs, bailouts for Lehman, bailouts for COVID. And, and a never-ending war in the Middle East for the, 20, the last 20 years, we can't afford another, ex, you know, another war, yep. even though the war machine is licking their chops. Right. They're thinking, well, you just have the Federal Reserve pump up the money, and we'll make, you know, and Lockheed will, you know. But we, there's a threshold on, on how much you can do with that. Very and much. eventually the whole country starts to lose its hegemonic power. And that is what now Ferguson wrote in a book called The, uh, the War of the World. 
he was playing off of the off of the the war of the worlds, right? Um, you know, things. So, so and he's writing about World War One. Why did World War One happen? And everyone's saying, oh, it was because you know some you know someone was assassinated and all this stuff, right? Yeah. No, right. that wasn't the reason. The reason was is that there was a lot of of, of debt that was starting to pile up, right? And there was, and, and these countries were starting to become unstable. Mm -hmm. And there was this, this finance thing going on that led to the war. Right. But a, a part of that book is talking about how England lost its hegemonic power because it overextended its debt mm -hmm. and, and, and its empire. And right. it had to truncate and it made them even weaker during World War II. And I am seeing the beginnings of that happening with the United States. The United States is has overextended itself. Oh yeah, totally. And it is it is laden with debt to the point where hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging. I, right. It's, I, it's to it's it's to the point that we can't finance a war, a two front war nope. with fifty percent old. We're in debt more. We're we're in debt of approximately. 30, I think it's 30 trillion. trillion. 30 trillion. Yeah. Our, and we have 20 trillion as a GDP, 21 trillion, right? Yeah. So we're 50% higher than than what what our GDP is. Right. All right. There's a point is, is that there's a threshold of debt where you can no longer be a hedge fund power. Yep. Yeah. We so it's not like the days in World War II where we didn't, we weren't debt laden, and that we weren't, you know, overextended. Right. You know, there's a lot of similarities between World War and World War II in, in this crisis. Yep. The similarity with World War One is is that we are now debt laden and overextended, like the British were. Right. All right. In World War II, you had these you had an actor, you know, that, that actor's name was Hitler. And he wanted to, you know, reconstitute Greater Germany right. with Australia or with uh, Austria. Right. So Germany and Austria, and he, you know, this was the Greater Germany kind of concept. This is very similar to what Putin's saying. The Greater Russia is Russia and Ukraine. Right. All right. So you have that dynamic going on, and you had a two-front war. All right. We did a two-front war on, Ger on Germany. The Nazis. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's the reason why Putin is saying we're fighting the Nazis. Yeah, it's a well, hint. And, and it's a hint. Literally, no, no, no. But there's, there's what, yeah, Chris, it's deeper. What I'm saying here. Yeah, I know. Putin is hinting that we're the Nazis, and the two front war is R Russia on the United States with China on the United States, yep. and they're going to be pinching us. And this has been, I think, this has been planned for a while. Yep. Not only in Russia, but with sure China. Has. Yep. Sure so, has. and Russia's going, you support us with our taking of the Eastern blocks back, and we'll support you with the island chain advancement. And it's not just the first island chain, it's the third island yeah. chain. And that means Hawaii. <laughs> right? Right? It's almost there. So, it's there. Yeah. 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 So, so, um, I'll tell you, it's this is a good starter. <laughs> this is a good starter episode. You know, so I, you know, so where, where do you think the next, where do you think the next 24 hours, 48 hours is going to go? Um, I think that you're going to see some bold moves by uh, Putin and then he'll harden up his positions and say, okay, what do you got? And whatever that determination is, will dictate the, the his response and the level of response. But I think that everybody's going to be like, eh, okay, good job. You can have that. Okay, we're done, right? I think that's what's going to happen. But um, we'll see. But whatever he's going to do, he, he's not going to fuck around about it. He's going to get it done. I think he's going to, I think within the next 72 hours, I think he's, he's, he's going to be pushing a lot of his forces all the way, all the way to the, all the, way to the uh, river. I, I, I would. I, I think there, he's going to have a little less than half of Ukraine because it's not completely bifurcated, fifty-fifty. Right. But 
He's going to have the East Bank. I could see him do the whole thing. I don't know. I, you know, the thing is, it wouldn't I, be a hard push. Too big. I think it's too big, and there's too, there would be enough people to do oh, you know, internally a yeah, problem internally yeah. to fight it to, to you know, yeah. yeah you know rebel forces yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's the reason why I was saying biological warfare makes sense when you're in an urban environment and it's protracted yeah and so 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 it, it, it my that's why I don't think he's going to do biological right now. Right. All right. And I don't think he's going to do tactical nukes unless there is some, you know, some serious threatening going on with NATO. Right. He could and be it's going to be mostly conventional, but lethal, very lethal conventional, and push hard. But once the grind starts, you know, and it's it's it, and the advancements aren't as as great as they were, and the Ukrainian people are fighting back and taking you know, lives of the, of the Russians, then biologics may be used. Then. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I, I would think that, that the biological phase would go. And I don't think that he would use tactical nukes yet because he doesn't know how far, how far he'll be able to advance. Yeah. Progress inward. Yeah. There, yeah. And that's another thing. I don't understand. Why did he take Chernobyl? I mean, it's desolate. It's radioactive. What the hell does he need it for? Why? Secure Trump. Don't know, man. That's a great question. Very good question. Yeah, I, you know, it's near the border of Belarus. You know, it's. You know, it's I, I sometimes question the. I think it's radiation. You know, how bad is it really, and how good are we at mitigating it and treating the situation? Because I know there are processes that you can reverse radioactive material. Um, but that's kind of expensive right now, but maybe it's not so much and we don't know about it, but I, it, it would be a great I way to keep people out of your area if they had a couple of tactical nuke sites and they're like, yeah, we don't want to go across there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does make sense that, you know, you know, just hit certain areas right. in a, a pattern. Right. And it's just, they don't, you know, it's like a no man's land. Exactly. For the next 10,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, that would be one strategy. I don't, I don't. It'd be kind of a crazy strategy. Yep. Plus, he's sixty-nine. Yeah. He's not a young chicken. Nope. Right. So, I mean, he doesn't. I mean, he's in good shape. Right. You know, and I'm sure that he drinks vodka. You know, for his health. Yes. But you know, I just. But I don't. An an an, an up and coming Russian. With the right connections, could take them out. Yeah. I mean, all these, all these major characters get taken yeah. out. Yeah. So, sure. so I mean, how? I mean, how much? How much shelf life does Putin really have? And that be, might be the strategy that the NATO forces is saying. It's like, you know, what? Well, maybe we can just play this out. It's going to be rough for Ukraine. It'll be a buffer. Right. Most likely, Putin will stop at Ukraine. Right. Even if he takes all of Ukraine, he'll probably stop at Ukraine. Yeah. Go yeah. fortify the borders with NATO along, you know, the NATO alliance. And even if it just it's like a cold war. Yeah, it's like a standoff in a cold war until he kicks the bucket. Yeah. I see that, but I also think is a huge part of it is a distraction from the COVID stuff or biological issues we have going on. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm concerned about what he has access to by taking that chunk of land uh, that we have in those bio labs, you know, because who knows what we have over there. <laughs> now, the thing is, you would think that the United States would have secured those that material and moved. It. We have special people that go and do that. Yeah, so I mean, we probably would have done it already. If not, then I'm sure. Yeah, Putin said he said to SEAL Team Six. Yeah. SEAL Team Six, we got biological murders in <laughs> Sector B, and you got to send it out to Wuhan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me that it is something, like, or or you know, at least FedEx it to Barracks Lab in, in South Carolina. <laughs> FedEx, maybe that's what all the C one C seventeens were doing. They're taking the bio lab stuff out. Yeah, you know. Drag, I, have, 
drop shipment, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. I have to my son's birthday party here in a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. So All right. So, so this has been a great, good first episode. All right. So Thank let's uh, let me uh, stop the recording here. Yeah. But uh, the, the, please, the viewers, go to Chris's channel, subscribe, okay. follow him on on Twitter. And also go and, uh, you know, help support my work by going to the store and, and uh, you know, purchasing some health products because, you know, you want to look good and you want to feel healthy before the nuclear war starts. So, <laughs> yes, you do. Thank you, for, thank you for listening and have a nice day. Oh, you're the um, host. So you got to switch it back. Can I? Or maybe I switch it. Stop recording. Stop.